Are you Welcome hearing? everyone to this, the School of Social Work State of the School presentation. <coughs> um, as all of you or many of you know that I started being Dean here in July of 2020 during COVID. Um, I certainly thought that by now we would be doing things and more events in person. So I'm looking forward to the day that we can actually do this um, and meet each other um, in the same space. So I thank you for joining us today. Uh, Matt, do you wanna start? Thank you. Today is a celebration of who we are at the School of Social Work and what we have accomplished this past year. I am more than impressed with the breadth and depth of the work done by our faculty and staff to accomplish our mission to develop practitioners, leaders, and scholars to advance the well being of populations and communities and promote racial, economic, and social justice. This year, we're also celebrating our 60th anniversary with a theme facing our past and transforming our future. I'm honored to leave the school and be a part of this amazing community. So who are we? Um, we are educational programs. We have about 580 souls or individuals who work at our school, faculty, staff, adjuncts, field liaisons and instructors who are all participating in some form or fashion at the school. Our educational um, programs include the BSW program that's housed at UMBC, along with our MSW and PhD. We have continuing education programs. We have um, training, technical assistance, as well as we have a child welfare academy providing training for child welfare workers in the state. We represent diverse backgrounds, points of view, and expertise in school. We are also beyond education. We're also, next slide, research and institutes. We have faculty who do enormous and incredible research. We have the Family Welfare Research and Training Group. We have the Institute for Innovation and Implementation. And Innovation and Implementation, sorry, Michelle. And we have the Ruth H. Young Center for Maryland. Um, we also, besides research and education, we're also community engagement, where we have Promise Heights, SWACOs, Positive School Centers, Family Connections, and the Financial Social Work Initiative. We are doing much as a school, and we have accomplished much even in spite of COVID. There's a lot that we have done, and today I really want to take to the time to celebrate those accomplishments as we move forward. Um, I'm honored and humbled to have joined this wonderful group of faculty, staff, students, alumni, community leaders, and UMB leadership. And again, we have much to celebrate since these dedicated individuals have accomplished so much this year. So as far as enrollment for our educational programs, we saw 836 students enrolled in our MSW program this year. 190 of them are come from the uh, universities of Shady Grove. 48 of them are in our Title IV-E program. 361 students are in the BSW program, part of UMBC, which includes Shady Grove. We have nine new students in our PhD program for a total of 43 students in the PhD program. And overall, 545 students received almost $2.5 million in non-loan assistance, meaning through scholarships, stipends, fellowships, we have provided support to 545 students. In our MSW program, we have oriented over 400 students through virtual orientations. Our student affairs and student services supported 300 students through individual psychosocial and academic support work. They provided 2,100 individualized advising sessions, whether it was online, over the phone, or email. We offered 290 courses. We've placed our field office, placed 763 students and 351 field placements across the state. Um, and, and during COVID, this is a remarkable feat. Um, we did see a, a, a percentage, a 20% reduction on the number of students going into field in the past years. However, we've added more field placements and more and 27 new agencies at USG alone. Our IDEA team, which stands for Instructional Design, E-Learning and Assessments, responded to 878 requests for services, which is up from last year was just 540 and the year before in 1819 was 325. They were busy providing support to 
our faculty who are pivoting to online work. At commencement, we graduated 427 students this past year. That includes 34 students from our school's Title IV-E program. And we did so as some of the pictures, if you saw the slideshow early on, and we were able to do some in-person, very different type of graduation where we were able to at least do some of the hooding for some of our students out front of our building. Some exciting improvements that are happening in our school. So the Office of Academic Affairs, we revamped the whole office and we now created a senior um, Associate Dean of Academic Affairs that Dr. Amanda Lenny has taken on. Um, and underneath her office includes student affairs, field education, Title IV-E, the IDEA team, the program at USG. And we also created a new office of admissions and enrollment, which is led by our new Associate Dean, Danielle White. The intent of doing this reorganization was to provide better communication between departments, stronger collaboration to support innovative program options. They were creating new videos to provide information on curriculum and degree options. And they updated the electronic field notebook to be able to analyze data and produce updates in our field education. So a ton of work was being done by this office. We also in our PhD program saw new leadership with Dr. Bethany Lee stepping in as the PhD program director. She stepped in in July of this year. In our PhD program, we saw an increase in the inquiries about the program um, and an increase in the number of applications submitted. And we confirmed nine new students. Six students also graduated, four defended their proposals and nine completed their comprehensive exams. And our students were authors or co-authors on over 26 peer reviewed publications and 28 peer reviewed presentations at conferences. Certainly a round of applause for them to be that involved in, in their journey of disseminating their work. Some PhD students also were noted and received awards this last year. Sarah Clem received the Association for Gerontology Education and Social Work Predissertation Fellowship. Vashti Adams joined Shauna Murray Brown in receiving the CSWE's Minority Fellowship Program, which is a prestigious program and very difficult to get in. Danielle Phillips was accepted into the International Partnership for Queer Youth Resilience International Student Training Network. And Jeffrey Anvari Clark was nominated for the 2020 Group for the Advancement of Doctoral Education Leadership Service Award. We're very proud of our students. In our BSW program, which is at UMBC, we saw that uh, Dr. Shelley Weishaupt took over as Associate Dean and Chair of the program in August of 2020. We're seeing a consistent increase in enrollment in the program, the BSW program at USG. And we see 115 BSC, BSW students placed in field placements or internships as part of their senior year at the program. In addition to our educational efforts, we've been very busy in our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. The first thing that happened over this past year was the development of a new office and new leadership where we saw Nejma Celestine Donner step in as assistant dean for DEI. We also saw um, the expansion of that office just recently with the adding of Julia Scott um, to that team. We also launched groups to support students, faculty, and staff. Um, Nejma and her team um, hosted uh, affinity groups for students, staff, and faculty for BIPOC, LGBTQIA disability groups and white accountability affinity groups. They also piloted intergroup dialogue meetings at the Institute um, for 20 faculty and staff there. We also developed and launched a DEI webpage and newsletter that's on our website with many resources and opportunities to understand the work that we're doing around DEI. We took a new focus with DEI by creating the diversity, equity and inclusion committee that was um, morphed out of the original committee that was under faculty. And this committee is comprised of faculty, staff, students, alumni, board members, and other community members. And they're doing incredible work. We provided training for faculty, staff, students, and leadership where, where the DEI office launched the Restorative Practices and Action Initiative, which provided five trainings and over 150 people attending. 
They hosted the annual JEDI, also known as Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Teach-In, and where 100 people attended. They provided anti-racism and anti-oppression training for the leadership team this past summer. The DEI office also supported efforts in our MSW education. They supported the launch of A Brief History of Oppression and Resistance, which is a self-paced online prereq course for all incoming MSW students. And that faculty and staff team who created that course won the UMB President's Core Value Award for diversity. And that team included Ashley Kaufman, Emma Kupferman, Lane Victorson, and Victoria Stubbs with support from so many others. DEI also, the DEI office also supported the structural oppression and its implication for social work course, which is also a required course for all incoming NSW students, and it's a three credit course. DEI also spent some time collecting a, a number of uh, opportunities for data where they implemented an online system for collecting data around climate and culture. They um, conducted a pulse survey and some of the comments that came out of the pulse survey are listed here. Leave them up for you to review. DEI was also in, in important and, and provided support and services and human resources, where they developed training for all of our search committees um, and, and helped train us on how to recruit and interview candidates. Um, they changed the adjunct interview process to include questions about DEI and changed our onboarding process. We also just celebrated this. Matt, you want to run this? Come on in. <laughs> Yesterday, we had, we had the opportunity to do a ribbon cutting of, of opening up our gender neutral restrooms in the School of Social Work. We have on two different floors now these restrooms available for any gender who is wants to who needs to use the facilities. The, the, uh, they're beautiful. And so I hope you when next time you're in the building, you come look at them. Now, in addition to our education and DEI work, we've done a lot of work around research. So in our sponsored projects, um, last year we received over $36 million in sponsored projects. We saw increases in faculty applying for large grants from NIH, National Institutes of Justice, and National Science Foundation. And our faculty are covering social problems such as substance abuse, behavioral health, homelessness, Alzheimer's, childhood trauma, domestic violence, developmental disabilities, HIV AIDS, and suicide, and, and many more topics. We also were able to see our first um, faculty member, Dr. Sarah Dababna, get a um, Fulbright Award, where she is currently in Egypt um, doing her work there. We're so proud of her for take, getting that award. As far as publications, uh, over the last four years, our faculty have published between 50 to 80 articles per year. So we're really proud of the work that faculty are doing to disseminate their research. Other parts of research include our Family Welfare Unit, which works closely with the Department of Human Services. They average, they provided ad hoc reports of an average 18 reports were requested and produced each month. They also did more than 200 management reports each month and they revised all of their training sessions, which used to be in person to a virtual format, but still were able to maintain an individualized and interactive format. So kudos to them for the work that they've done there. For the work that's being done in the community, we have our continuing professional education, where again, they too were doing all their work in person and with COVID had to pivot to remote training. During last year, they hosted 266 workshops with 63 new ones included. They had participants um, from over 30 states and some of the comments are listed there and, and from the participants who were in the trainings. Moving to work that Promise Heights has done. They have provided meals for school families and community members. They prepared 7,400 and delivered 7,400 prepared meals. They didn't prepare them. They delivered 7,400 prepared meals 
and 200 boxes of food weekly from October through April during COVID. They worked with UNB on a Comcast initiative to provide 300 families with vouchers for the internet. They pivoted to in school, from in-school support to in-community support for children and families from the five schools that they worked in. Um, and we also saw at the end of this year a change in leadership with Bronwyn Maiden retiring after 17 years of incredible service to the school and to West Baltimore. Also under Promise Heights is the Be More for Healthy Babies. In the Upton Druid Heights, the infant mortality rate dropped by 75% to 3.8 deaths per 1,000 live births. And this rate is lower than the city's overall white infant mortality rate. Please know that this is actually the third lowest rate in the country. And the only two communities that had a lower rates were suburban communities in the Northeast. So the fact that a city such as Baltimore could be ranked this high gives a lot of um, applause and, and commendation to Stacy Stevens and her team from Be More for Healthy Babies. They do a lot of work as far as different activities that they do in the community for those that may not know. They have community collaborative and community achievers group. They do mom's clubs, postpartum mom's clubs, breastfeeding groups, parenting groups, baby basic groups. They work with barbershops to try to engage fathers into the, in, into the parenting process. They do an incredible amount of work in the community and we're very proud of them. SWACOS, also known as Social Work Community Outreach Services, which has been here close to 30 years. Um, there's a lot of work that they've done. So some of the work they did around the election last year where they promoted the Get Out the Vote campaign, where they had 10 voter registration volunteer trainings and they trained 23 volunteers. Um, students who were working with SWACOS created the Disruptor, a student-run publication to amplify student voices and strengthen student organizing. Positive School Center as part of SWACOS supported 25 Baltimore City public schools. And let me tell you how they did that. They, they worked with a thousand teachers and staff who educate over 12,700 students. They provided 230 hours of school specific coaching, training and technical assistance, plus 42 hours of workshops for the community. They also provided 178 hours of training and consulting for other schools, not part of these 25 schools. Note that, that a positive, the positive schools centers, 65% of those schools are using restorative alternatives to, pun, to punitive discipline practices. And they created the evolving the Superwoman syndrome initiative for black women educational leaders in Baltimore city. Right now they have two groups of 15 women. They also supported 159 strategic partnerships across seven community schools. Positive schools distributed over 35,000 pounds of food, leveraged almost 170,000 in donated funds and hosted two vaccination clinics. And the results of all of this is that they were recognized by UMB and they received the Catalyst for Excellence Award in 2020. Very proud of the work that Positive Schools Centers is doing. Family Connections is another program that's part of SWACOS, their research-based in-home early intervention service. They have provided services to over a thousand families with, with at least over 3,200 children and has had worked with 213 graduate level social work interns, including those from Title IV-E um, who were placed with the program. The work that they've done in Family Connections that 80% of the families of the 60 families they worked with last year demonstrated an increase in self-efficacy, an increase in community connections and social supports, and a decrease in self-blame. 85% of those 60 families showed an increase in protective factors and a decrease in risk factors. And 100% of families remain unified with no out-of-home placements due to child abuse. So again, co congratulations to Family Connections for the incredible work they're doing in the community with families. Finally, some other SWACOS initiatives. Um, Dr. Wendy Shia um, and her team created the Ubuntu Collective for Community Sovereignty, which is a process of coming together in the community with people who are most impacted by poverty and oppression to build collective power. This group is working to, to address some of the macro issues of poverty and housing instability and addressing some of the problems that are seen in our communities. They gave 
almost 72,000 for emergency assistance, um, for eviction prevention, housing stability, safe sleeping, food security and supplies. And they delivered almost 4,800 pounds of food to families in partnership with the Maryland Food Bank. So much work that the SWACOS has done. Another one of our great institutes is the Institute for Innovation and Implementation. The, approximately half of their work extends to 28 states beyond Maryland. So those, all those states outlined in red are where you can find the work of the Institute being done. So they not just a local group, but we're also nationally represented. Um, some of the Institute initiatives, they have a national training and technical assistance center, which meaningfully elevated the capacity of states and providers to respond to youth with behavioral health needs. The data that they've collected from that center um, suggests that support from the center has shown an improved implementation outcomes, um, including new partnerships with external organizations and increases in access to services and innovative funding strategies. The Institute also established the Center for Ex of Excellence on LGBTQ plus behavioral health equity. This is a five year, three and a half million dollar grant from HHS and SAMHSA to establish the center. And the center has helped to design nine interventions to include the design of manuals, training, fidelity tools, evaluation protocols, and a number of other tools and processes for quality improvement to ensure that the nine programs can be replicated. In the first nine months of the center, which just started this past year, they created and launched a website, disseminated monthly newsletters, and created six e-learning modules and three resource, doc resource documents, including an animation on SOGI ter terminology that has been viewed over 1,300 times. So that's when the report was written. I imagine it's gone up quite a bit since then. So kudos to this new center. The Institute has also initiated a multi-year partnership with the Indigo Cultural Center, which is, provides ongoing equity training and coaching for all consultation programs to address racial inequality in early childhood. The Institute also started the National Quality Improvement Center for family-centered reunification with the intent of that project is to work with five to seven different public child welfare sites around the country to identify, assess, and implement promising and evidence-based practices that address the individual and collective needs of families with children in foster care. So again, kudos and comp, you know, my congratulations to all the wonderful work that the Institute has done and its, its breadth and depth of work that's been available both in the Maryland and across the country. We've also seen some incredible work being done um, within the School of Social Work and some of our in infrastructure supports. For example, we have our communications department. We established the communications group, which it combined, takes all the people who are working in the different units across the, our school to come together to help um, go over various projects, find tools to help them work better and smarter and to stay current on what is going on at the school. And on social media, you can see the work that's being done there and the attention that the School of Social Work is getting around communications. In development, we raised over $2.2 million in donations last year during a year of COVID and a new dean, which I'm very proud of the work that the development team has done. Um, they increased the number of new donors um, from 253 to 308. And they increased the number of donors who increased their giving from previous years. So congratulations to the development team. The alumni um, program run by Krishna Williams, almost 16,000 active alumni. Um, alumni board includes alumni from last year who just graduated up to alumni who graduated over 40 years ago. Um, the alumni board is actively surveying and interviewing alumni for our 60th anniversary um, to get their, the perspectives of the alumni out there and, and on our school, looking at facing our past and transforming our future. We're gonna present those findings at the alumni homecoming event later in the spring in March. Our IT team, often the, um, not necessarily noticed too often in, school, in the school, but they are a critical cog in, our, in the work that we do here at the school. They assisted with faculty with setting up the home office and networking issues as faculty pivoted from teaching in person to going home. They shifted to assisting users with audio and video conferencing. 
and they're moving the physical file storage and servers to the cloud. They responded to over 4,200 requests for services with over 4,000 hours of support. So congrats to the IT team led by Dave Pitts. So what's next? Where do we go from here? UMB just finished its planning for the next five years with the strategic plan. We have a steering committee that is led and co-chaired by Dr. Karen Hopkins and Sharita Adams. On the committee, the committee's uh, comprised of representatives from faculty and staff, from students, from our board of advisors and from alumni. And they're gonna be soliciting input using surveys, focus groups and town halls all through this fall and into early spring. Um, and some questions that, some overarching questions for, for all of us to think about as a community, as a school of social work, um, as we think about what do we wanna be, what, what will make us stand out as a school of social work among other schools around the country? What makes us unique? What makes us special and different? Where are our strengths? How will we become an anti-racist and anti-oppressive school? What will that look like? How will we know that we've accomplished that? Um, and then how will we measure and communicate all of our successes? I think this is some of the challenges that I've taken on um, as being Dean of, of amplifying the excellent work that's being done around the school by so many faculty and staff that, who are working here. We also wanna maintain as we move forward the next steps, maintain our focus on DEI work, continue to support the efforts of Nejima and Julia um, at, at, throughout all of our units and all, throughout our school. Um, we're maintaining a focus on community involved work, both research and teaching. And we're paying attention to our research infrastructure and support, both from pre-award to post-award to really strengthen um, the support needed so that faculty can continue to go after grants and continue to fund find funded research um, and do the work that they're doing. We're also planning as we move forward to maintain a focus on our education and responding to changes in enrollment and needs of our students. Um, we've seen this past year a dip in our enrollment in the MSW program. So we're exploring a number of different options. Um, and when I say we, I mean the faculty um, and hopefully students and staff as well, where we're looking at online programs, hybrid programs, intensive weekends, part-time, and potentially new degrees, all within the confines of thinking of strategic planning. We also want to maintain our focus um, that, that we continue to communicate the work that we're doing and that we get the word out there. Um, we're looking to do a complete teardown and rebuild of our school's website. That will happen during, start this fall, later in the fall, and will be done hopefully as soon as possible. Um, and we'll also, the development of a branding style guide for the School of Social Work. So I wanna do some important thank yous because none of this, none of this would be possible without the support of so many people. First, our staff and faculty. Again, I am humbled, I am honored to be a part of this group, to be able to be the leader of the School of Social Work um, as Dean and to, be, um, to have the opportunity to work with so many incredible people who are doing so incredible work. The pieces that I've presented here today are just a small bit of what we have accomplished over this year. This was garnered from reports that were submitted by all the different units. Um, and it doesn't even scratch the surface of the depth and breadth of the work being done. Um, so again, a, a huge thank you to our faculty and staff. Thank you to our students for their patience with, with the shifting and, and delivery of education, for their um, commitment to helping support the school, um, even in the ribbon cutting yesterday, the all gender restroom was one of our students who was there. Um, so again, couldn't do it without our Student Government Association and the work of students um, and those supporting our students, especially folks like Don Schaefer and Taylor, uh, and Taylor, I'm Henriette Taylor. I'm like, what's Taylor's last name? It's Taylor. <laughs> Henriette Taylor, along with Teresa Washington and their work um, with Nakia Sherman as well um, in supporting students and developing the new program that I next year will hope to report on the first gen program we're doing. I wanna thank our community partners. Baltimore City Public Schools has been a huge partner with us through Positive Schools and Promise Heights. Um, the city of Baltimore, certainly the mayor's office, um, several of our faculty and staff are working closely with some of their initiatives and the support that they've given to us. Um, a number, I can't even list all the Maryland state agencies who have worked with us, um, whether it's um, Department of Human Services and Child Welfare Services, We've worked with so many different agencies around the state 
um, as well as all those agencies who are working that the institutes are working with around the country. Um, plus, of course, all the myriad of nonprofit and corporate sponsors, especially those nonprofit and other agencies that are taking in our students. None of this would be possible without them. And so a huge uh, round of applause and thank yous to them. I also wanna take uh, a minute to thank the board members, the advisory board members, some of who are here today, um, along with um, uh, our alumni board and the work that they're doing. And I wanted, uh, the next slide will be a, a presentation of the Dean's Medal to one of our board members. And the internet is slow. <laughs> well, Judy, it doesn't look like it wants to cooperate with us, but it was a great, great video. <laughs> Everything works in practice, right? But not in real life. So, um, so the, the Dean's Medal is um, a medal that's given out to somebody who's made a significant contribution to our school and has supported us in a myriad um, number of ways. Um, and this year we gave the Dean's Medal to um, Howard Solens, who um, is our outgoing chair of our board of advisors. He has been on the board for nine, over 19 years. He has served incredibly um, uh, well. He has provided um, so much support to myself as an incoming dean, as well as support to the previous dean, Barth, um, and was here even for the previous dean to that. So um, Howard has been um, a mainstay of our board of advisors. We're going to miss him sorely. And so what we did is we had an event earlier um, in the summer where we had the um, board members coming in to, to recognize some new board members and meet some new board members. Um, we did this at my home. Um, and where we were able to give the Dean's Medal to Howard there. I wanted to, you know, again, we're not in person, so I couldn't do it here and, and live on, um, for this event. Um, so we did it at my home in front of the people who have worked with him the most, which are the alumni board um, and some other staff and faculty who were available for the, the event. So I'm sorry you couldn't see it. Um, those of you who know Howard, uh, he was speechless. <laughs> so if you know him and know that he was speechless, <laughs> you know that he was, it was an unexpected award for him. And I was so honored to be able to give it to him. He is so much deserving of it. So um, thank you to Howard. And if Howard's not here today, you know, let uh, those of you who know him well, please thank him for me. Other thank yous that we need to talk about are the UMB leadership, especially those President Gerald, Interim Provost Ward and Vice Presidents and Deans from across the university. You have made me feel extremely welcome and, and provided much support um, advice and, um, and opportunities for our school to um, be supported in the way it, it has been. And I look forward to continuing to work with you. I wanna thank the leadership at UMBC with President Rabowski, who's unfortunately leaving at the end of this year, along with Provost Rouse. Um, at USG, the leadership there, Ann Kamadian. Um, she hosted a luncheon for me this past summer, virtually of course, um, connecting me to folks down at USG and um, I'm looking forward to continuing our work with her. And Anne is also new. She started, I think, a couple months after me. Um, and so we're looking forward to working together. Um, as well as thanking so many of our donors and sponsors. Some of you are here today. Again, we couldn't do any of this without you. We couldn't um, accomplish all the work that we've done. Um, I am so excited. I really, truly am so excited about how much we've done. And I hope that all of you get a sense of, wow, this is just one year. This isn't just, you know, this isn't the history of the school and the length of the school. This is the work that was done in one year in COVID in the middle of a pandemic. So I, I can't stress enough how so proud I am of everyone here at the school um, and the amazing work that's being done. Um, and I'm just humbled to be a part of it. So I think at this point, the presentation is done. Yeah, and we have just a couple minutes, uh, probably till about 1.45, if anyone had any uh, 
questions for the dean if you could put them in the chat rather than just uh, turning on your microphone that would be the best way to do it and we'll try to get to the questions as as they come in um, I saw some stuff in the the chat from Joan David about taking part in the the lead training so you might want to check the tr the chat for that and uh, just lots of congratulations to everybody I know everyone's just done a fantastic job this this past year under challenging circumstances not seeing any questions come in we'll just give it another minute and then we can wrap it up if we don't get any questions I'm going to try to show the video because I see that Howard's on and I really would like him to see the video. Okay. Um, let me see if I can share my screen and uh, see if it'll work. Try resharing and share your sound. There's a little button in the bottom left. Say it again. Try resharing your screen. Can't close that out. And then when you you can't hear it. Share, when you click on share, make sure you click turn the sound on. It's in the lower left. Ah. See, I'm learning all this too. Let's start again. So Howard has been a mainstay of the board for forever. And normally this this activity we're going to do now, we would do at our um, State of the School, except, of course, the State of the School event, September 28th, online, okay. is online and not live. And so what I'd like to do, Howard, is to give you the new Be grateful to your 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 years of service, almost two decades. Yeah. No one deserves it more. This, you know, I learned about this is Dean's Medal. I'm like, what's a Dean's Medal? <laughs> like it's it's a, you know to honor those who've gone above and beyond in the service for the school, the community. <laughs> Never at a loss for words, but I feel like yeah. God. Yeah. 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 I'm just stunned. I just, uh, just really, the school does means so much. It it has evolved. When I think about where we started and where we've come and where we're going and what it means and the respect that the school gets on the campus at the highest levels and at the university system at the highest levels, well deserved, well earned by a lot of hard work, by a lot of dedicated students and faculty <laughs> and leaders and board members. It's very much, uh, it's very much meaningful, worthwhile, deeply gratifying effort. And so I'm stunned and grateful. <laughs> thank you. Well, it's definitely the least we can do to honor your work. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you. That was, a, that was a lovely night. And Matt. Yes, only one question came in, and it came in from Roger Ward, and I think it's a great question. Did President Gerald make the Dean's Medal? No, he did not, but it's no, not a not. bad idea. <laughs> it's on my list. <laughs> it's on my list to go to President Gerald's Forge and craft our own Dean's Medal. Um, so, yes, great idea. Thank you. Well, no other questions have come in. So, Judy, if you want to, if you want to wrap it up, that's great. Yep. Just thank you so much for coming. I appreciate all of you here. I see faculty, staff, and I see you know folks from UMB and around our community. Or I see um, our alumni and board members. And, and just again, I am I am so deeply touched and honored by the support that all of you have shown me this past year. Um, Again, I was hoping we would be able to do this in person, and I'm still slowly meeting people in person. Um, and hopefully, maybe next year, this will be, we'll be together as we celebrate. So 
Thank you for celebrating with me the successes of the school and the wonderful work that we're doing. Um, I look forward to what next year will bring.